So the round of 16 of the Euros is done, complete. Now it's time we predict the quarterfinals. Now, you might be wondering, Maxwell, this isn't really your normal place, right? No unmade bed, rack of random jerseys. You know, the background is, um, it's a, it's a kitchen, yeah. Um, I'm in Leipzig right now. Just an Airbnb I got, so please excuse the echoes if you can also hear that. I, I really can't do anything about that. But yeah, if you haven't known already, I'm in Germany. Uh, I just went to two Euro matches, Portugal versus Slovenia, where I saw Ronaldo cry, and then also uh, Austria versus Turkey, where I saw a genuine classic, one of the greatest matches I have ever seen in my entire life. Actually, no, that was the greatest match. The atmosphere was incredible. Now, if you want to follow me in this uh, journey across Germany, you can follow my Instagram, where I've been kind of documenting everything over there, or, you know, trying to. But enough of that, let's talk our predictions for the quarterfinals, and we'll start with Spain versus Germany. This is a rematch of the Euro 2008 final, and it is criminal that this is a quarterfinal matchup. Spain got here by being the Georgians 4-1 after an early scare. Overall, a phenomenal performance, and that again comes down to those wingers. Nico Williams tore through Georgian fullbacks with ease and also got himself a goal and an assist. Lamine Yamal carved through defenses as well. He was fantastic at finding space for himself to produce good scoring opportunities. But the actual scoring? It's not really there yet. And again, Fabio Ruiz, candidate for best player of the tournament. He grabbed his third goal this campaign in the last 16. And then there's defensive midfielder Rodri, who is the only Manchester City player currently beating the allegations of being a system player. He's been crucial for this team, providing composure and also stability. And just like at club level, he's there to score important goals for Spain as well. The back line, on the other hand, is about the only concern I have. Laporte and Kukurea were great. Lenoman, on the other hand, he was pretty iffy. Now, it may seem insane, but for the Germans, their last 16 appearance this year is the first since 2016. And in the last 16, apart from the early scare, the Germans were pretty dominant and won 2 0 versus Denmark. And the backline in that game did a really solid job. Raum suppressed everything on the wings, Kimmich on the other hand. But then you had Schlotterbeck replacing Ta, who was suspended, and he was wonderful. On top of a great defensive display, he also showed his aerial dominance and gave us a Schlotty classic with an assist to Musiala. And also, we can't forget about Neuer, who had some pretty good saves against Denmark. Onto the midfield, it's practically Tony Cruz's playground. He had more than 20 accurate passes that was more than any other player in that game. Up top, Kai Havertz had a better game. His footwork was enchanting at times, but when it comes to the finishing, it's still not really there. Which is exactly why I am still a full crew believer. But then of course you have Jamal Musiala. Against Denmark, he wasn't at his best, but still proved difficult for his opponents. And he still also managed to score a goal. Again, it is criminal that Germany and Spain are meeting in the quarterfinal, but here we are, I suppose. Although I think it's pretty fair to say that whoever wins this has a good chance of winning it all. And for me, I'm going with 1-0 to Germany. For as much as I love Spain's new game, I think this isn't really their time yet. I think overall, this will be a game that is highly contested with plenty of shots, but most of them being squandered. Portugal versus France, a game where I could see this either being really great or really terrible. And I'm going! Portugal advanced to the quarters after beating Slovenia in the round of 16 on penalties thanks to an absolute masterclass from Diogo Costa. Costa was also behind a crucial one-on-one -on -one stop versus Sheshko after a mistake from Pepe. So it's definitely clear to say that Costa has matured over the last few years. Which means a lot because on top of that, you have Portugal's defense, which I would say has been one of the most brilliant in this entire tournament. Although Pepe had quite the off day, so that could be something to keep in mind because, you know, he is 41. But it wasn't all that bad. He was still incredible in the air. And Ruben Dias, unbelievable. Nothing could get past him. Over in the midfield, Vitinha had another wonderful performance. As did Joao Palinho, whose profile was almost perfect for such a gritty game. He had seven attempted tackles, and all seven of them were successful. Now the attack, it wasn't great against Slovenia. Very hesitant. But I will say, Rafael Leao looked a lot more comfortable in his skin in that game. Pretty much tormented the Slovenian defenders everywhere he went. And then... There's Cristiano Ronaldo. Listen, I have been saying this for many months now. Father time has arrived, and I'm sorry, but he is a liability more than anything else. Time and time again, he was receiving deliveries and was doing a worse job of converting them than FedEx. And my god, why is he still on free kicks? Why is he taking one from here? It's not 2012 anymore, man, I'm sorry. France, on the other hand, advanced after being a team with yet another 
own goal. It's quite insane, honestly, moving to the quarterfinals, having still not scored a single goal in open play. But that does say a lot about the defense, because it's been really good in this tournament. It's been the reason why France have even made it this far. Mike Magnan, as formidable as always, one of the best keepers in this tournament, and he is getting a ton of help from his backline. Teo Hernandez in the last game made a crucial stop. He and Jules Koundé have been wonderful, and the center back partnership of Saliba and Upamakano has kind of surprised me, honestly. They've looked better with every game played, especially William Saliba. Over in the midfield, N'Golo Conte with another impressive showing. In 2024, and if he wasn't on a bird-killing rampage, Shuameni was quite brilliant. And lucky, lucky France, because Adrian Rabio is suspended for the next game. So as opposed to playing favorites like he does, Deschamps will actually be forced to play Eduardo Camavinga. Finally, it's about damn time. On to the attack though. It's still a mess. France is dominating possession, creating chances, but nothing's really coming out of it. Griezmann hasn't been great. Mbappe? I don't know what the hell's going on there. I guess he just can't do it in the Euros for some reason. And sure, France can make all of this somehow work against a false generation, but I'm not entirely sure if this will work against Portugal. So for my prediction, I'm gonna go for scenes of 2016 again, 1-0 win to Portugal in extra time. We got England versus Switzerland. This should be an interesting match. Whether or not England actually show up until the 90th minute, we'll see. But speaking of England, it's very rare that I actually get a prediction right. Let alone spot on. Somehow I see England bullshitting their way through. I think this goes one all into extra time and England somehow find a goal. Ignore every other prediction I've done so far. I am Lisa Al Gaib. Every prediction video, I hate talking about this team, because what is there to talk about? All there is, is just Southgate terrorism ball. Mark Gahey, the best player for England in this tournament, and guess what? He's suspended. We're really gonna see in the European Championship quarterfinal, Lewis Dunk play alongside mid. Everyone's mid. This entire team is mid. Anyways, on to the midfield. Jude Bellingham was terrible, but at least he saved England from embarrassment. Can't really say the same about rice that belongs in a gentrified Asian restaurant in Charlotte, North Carolina. And I don't really know why Southgate took him off, but I thought Kobe Mino was pretty solid. What was that all about? Too much pause to play? And oh god, man, the, the attack, or the lack thereof. I swear, man, throughout this entire tournament, it's like the English attack has been paying homage to the Queen, because they're not there. Kane, terrible. Saka, horrendous. Phil Foden, Ollie Alexander would look better in that position right now. Cole Palmer, though. Glimpses of what we could actually see in the English attack. Too bad Southgate will probably bench him for eternity for that. Listen, I'm sorry I get pissy when I talk about England, but this team is so stale. I feel like I've enjoyed two-week-old bread more than a single England game this year. Switzerland, on the other hand, a far more enjoyable team to watch in this tournament. Switzerland advanced to the quarterfinals after dominating the Italians in the last 16. Sure, did the Italians practically bend over and die? Yes. But this Swiss team is really good. I really like how the Swiss defense is set up the more they play. They can sometimes still short circuit here or there, but against England, I feel like they'll be okay. But you know what's better than the Swiss defense? The midfield. Abisher and Freuler, once again with fantastic performances, same with Rieder, and there have actually been conversations about Granit Xhaka being one of the best midfielders in the world currently. And honestly, I could see that in the way that he managed that midfield throughout the game versus Italy. I have no idea how he's transformed like this, but Xhaka's gone from the rash red card destroyer to such a composed act in the midfield. He alone was the pivot. No other midfielder has looked like such a reliable outlet more than him. In attack, there's no stars, but there's a very efficient and direct attack, and it's worked wonders for this team. And against the Italians, there was just so much confidence in the way that the Swiss team played. And keep in mind, I know this Italian team isn't very good, but it's still the reigning champions. I really can't see it any other way form-wise. Switzerland should win this despite all of England's black magic. So I got them winning 2-0, first ever semi-final appearance in an international national tournament for the Swiss. And lastly, we have the Netherlands versus Turkey. First, we'll start with the Netherlands, and the Dutch proved their doubters wrong with a 3-0 win versus Romania. Very convincing performance. And speaking of the doubters, I was one of them, and that was mainly because of the midfield. And while I'm not entirely convinced, I liked what I saw from Tiani Reinders, who is, yes, part Indonesian. 
I will never escape. But his performances from box to box were desperately needed for this Dutch team. Xavi Simmons also showed glimpses of the brilliance he's capable of. He had two assists versus Romania. Speaking of goal scoring, Cody Gakpo is in prime tournament form again. Goal and an assist this game. This now puts his tally to three goals for the tournament. He's pretty much showing how it's done because Depay and especially Bergwijn sure as hell aren't. Also, Daniel Malin scored two goals. That should be really good for his confidence going forward. But then there was the other criticism I had about the Dutch, which was their defense. And honestly, nothing's really changed in that regard. Romania went after the Dutch for about five minutes, and then, yeah, that, that was pretty much it. I will say, though, Denzel Dumfries had a really great showing on the flanks. Turkey, on the other hand, beat Austria 2-1 to cement themselves as the true dark horses of the tournament. Most impressive part, they did this without Chalanoglu. Now, the one thing that I see in this Turkish side, in contrast to the other Turkish dark horses, is the fact that this team is a complete unit. In the past, it's always been talks about individual talents, especially in 2020. But things have actually changed this time around, and nothing really reflects that more than Turkey's defense. It's been severely underrated in this tournament. The player I loved the most in that back line was their wingback, Kaliolo. Against Austria, every time he progressed the ball, it just felt like something was gonna happen. I also liked what I saw from Baris Yilmaz. He didn't score, but he always looked like a threat on the counter. And then Arda Guler. I mean, what a player, but honestly. Being able to watch him in person, truly an experience, especially if you're being surrounded by thousands of Turkish fans. He was pretty much everywhere as the main creative outlet for the Turkish. And every time he was on the ball, nothing but graceful football and what felt like a dogfight. I have no doubt that this will be a great match. Two teams eager to fight for the semis, end to end, I'm very excited. I'll be honest, maybe it was because I actually saw Turkey in person, but I think they edged past the Dutch in a 3-2 thriller. And that was my Euro 2024 quarterfinal predictions. Who do you think will go through between Spain versus Germany, England versus Switzerland, Portugal versus France, Netherlands versus Turkey? Let me know. But of course, a massive shout out to all our members, including Janos Balas, Brazilian Fury, Uncle Jeff, Othman J, Haba Cook, Andazir Makalankam, Alex Rod, Ulta, Miguel Munoz, Return Fire, Rory Burns, Slyer Kit, Sniffers, Taco Oka fan, The Cipriot 35, Not Windows 95 Man, Kentra Agatra, Big Boards, The Baby Eater the Second, Kerbo, Unkwell, St. Terrence, Sylvia Citrus, Ryan Jans, Wise Orange, Rashford Enthusiast, Cocosaurus Rex, Le James Bronze, Samu, Just MRC, Cheese Bait, Cooper Rory, The Somali Pirate, Claymore Roomba, Winder Gel, M4 Does Stuff, Finn Likes Rugby More, Dave Vox, The Porter Geyser, TPSK25, Polar Protos, Von Fan, Lucien Von Kreuz, Ethan Bennett loves Kavicha, Chris Visconti, Dominic Griffin, Kyler Krebs, Mohamed Altanib, Nish, Patrick Barley, Rashford God5, Raspberry Ale, subscribe to Tendi Tim, and Unbroken Persona. If you'd like to become a member, there'll be a link to the website down below and up in the annotations. By the way, also on the website, you can buy this hat. It's pretty cool. Look at it. Look at it. It's pretty cool. You can also follow me on Twitter if you want, follow me on Instagram for all the adventures happening in Germany. Um, I might stream on Twitch if I can figure out how to do that while I'm in Berlin. We'll see. But until then, I'll see you guys.